Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. That is why I have got to catch him this time. To show these kids that the example he sets is a first-class ticket to nowhere. Oh, Ed, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. Really? Uh-huh. Give him all the information. I mean, obviously, I mean Johnny's skeptical about it. He doesn't believe it, but just uh, <laughs> but just lay it out for him, and he'll have tons of questions. Like he already has tons of questions. No worries. And tons. then, and uh, we, I was talking before about uh, Mad Mike. You now you know of Mad Mike Hughes, right? Uh, yeah, we we financed him, so yeah, I know everything about Mad Mike. That's talk about that on the air because we've had Mike on the show a bunch, and uh, and and so let let him know that as well, or I'll have Johnny bring up Mad sure, Mike. At some sure, 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 sure. Awesome, man. All right, well, just have a good time. Jump in there. Hang on one second. Johnny will be on with you, okay? Right. Thank you. Hang on, bud. Okay, Mark, here they come, brother. Uh, again, it's Johnny and uh, and Nikki. And like I said, he goes, just tell him. He goes, man, he goes, tell him, you know, I'm skeptical of it, obviously, but just have do good radio, man. He'll Johnny will have his questions and have him fire right back at me, and uh, All right. and we'll get into it. Okay. All right, All right hang let's on, do bud. it. All right, hang on, brother. Kid Rock Cowboy, 46 degrees in Kansas City. It's Johnny Dare, Nikki Face, T Bone, Jay Craig. It is Monday. Finally, you guys made it to. Well, I'm going to be in the game in hours. That's not too bad, man. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a rainy, cold week. It's fall, man. Thanksgiving's around the corner. A lot of stuff is happening. We've got, of course, Twisted Christmas announced, the Jackal Family Reunion on December 21st. We've got Steel Panther coming in. Don't, tickets went on sale. I don't know if it's sold out this weekend or not. I'll ch- check on all that business. Uh, but before we get bother with any of that stuff, we'll talk about football and the Chiefs are killing it. What a great year. Yeah. What a, how, many, how many games do we have left? And it's still, well, they're a little over halfway through. We're 8-1 and one now. All right. So I'm going to start watching games as soon as we get to the playoffs. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm on the bandwagon. <laughs> you got a few Just more. Just let me know when I'm supposed to jump on. Yeah, we'll get a T-shirt. We'll do the whole thing. All right. Uh, oh, I'm not wearing the clothes. I don't want to say <laughs> I don't even wear radio shows and t-shirts, man. I'm not doing that. Put the team. Yeah. I, uh, uh, more importantly, uh, I love people of varying opinion, especially when they're so far out of what the norm is, flat earth being one of them. So there's a conference. This is a real thing. This isn't just people with foil hats. You know, these are, are very normal, some well-to-do human beings who have lives and families, and they believe, for whatever reason, they believe that the earth is absolutely unequivocally flat. Uh, I don't share that, but I don't care if they think it's flat. It doesn't bother me right. if they think it's flat. I think it's, it's fantastic. There's an entire conference happening in Denver, Colorado. It's getting a lot of attention. November 15th, 16th this year. Hailing from South Whidbey Island, Washington, our next guest is a former professional gamer and proprietary software trainer. In 2014, he began looking into the flat earth theory and now spends his days telling the world about what he feels has been hidden from the public for decades. And soon, he will be the keynote speaker at the Flat Earth International Conference in Denver. Please welcome Mark Sargent. Hey Mark, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks guys. I've never had a robot introduction before. That was really cool. Yeah, so listen. I... You are the keynote speaker at the Flat Earth International Conference. That's a pretty heavy thing. How did you end up being the keynote speaker? Uh, because I was the I created the Flat Earth Clues about three years ago, the introductory lesson. I'm I'm kind of like if Flat Earth is a university, I'm the freshman recruiter. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of other speakers. There's 20 speakers of this thing, and uh, you know, legitimate scientists like like. Astronomers or astronomers? Oh, good Lord, no. No, no, no. There, there isn't an academic out there that would touch it with a 10-foot pole. I mean, once you do that, you're... Why do you think that is? Uh, for the most part, you're acad- it, people in academics, they're too far gone. Uh, if you've got a master's degree in a physical science or higher, that, that's it. There's nothing we can do for you. But everything else be below that is fair game. Well, I've seen, though, but I've seen scientists refute another scientist's finding. I've seen guys go at it in, in arguments, no, you don't have that right. I've seen, definitely seen arguments. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. But do you want to be that scientist that'll go up against flat earth? If you don't beat us, you know, if you treat it like a boxing match, if you don't beat us in the first round, we, you know, you're in real, real trouble. In fact, I had a, uh, 
I was supposed to do a debate with a physicist from Georgetown University uh, earlier this year. Oh, no, I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry, Mark. I, 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 I must have not made myself clear. I was talking about are there any scientists that are on your side that are speaking, that are, you know, astrologists or, or astronomers, I, I'm sorry. No, the, the, no, the only people that we have on our side are engineers and all branches of the military and pilots and anybody that has to do with transportation. We got a lot of subject matter experts, but from the academia world, no, not yet. So here's, tell me this. This is my main question. Mm -hmm. Why would anyone want to lie about the shape of the earth? Uh, the biggest reason would be power. And that is, look, if you've spent the last 500 years telling people that they're just this tiny speck on a rock flying through an impossible universe, and then all of a sudden, you empowered them and told them, oh yeah, by the way, you are special. You're living in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and it was built for you. I am not going to say, what? you know. Now Earth is a building? Oh, that's, yeah, this is what I did not know that you guys were, were believed in. So you believe uh, that this was uh, uh, made by a higher power, somebody. Yeah, somebody. Uh, specifically uh, for us to live in this little ecosphere or or whatever you would like to call it. And uh, But it's, it's flat. All right, so tell me this. Yeah. Why would anything be different if we if they'd have started saying it from the beginning? Oh, it's flat. Uh, it, various reasons. Uh, the how far are we going to go into this? Uh, academic. I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You, you're. A, the, it's an old question, which is why would the powers that be? And what I'm telling, talking about here for anyone that's out there is you're living in a terrarium, a planetarium, a, a snow globe, a Truman Show, and even our best. In well, in a terrarium we have a yeah we have an atmosphere that keeps us alive oh yeah 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 sure but i'm saying it's an enclosed building uh it, it, there anything outside of it is unknown uh and space is more How do rockets get out <laughs> who told you about the rockets the american military those guys the How rockets the, the, the rockets are built but they're just dumped into the ocean the space program goes nowhere they never had it was an illusion that was created in 1958 oh, right. after we found it after the united states and the soviet union figured out where the boundaries were this i mean we didn't even so know our soviet union yes and china and everybody that purports the international space station the uh, moon landing uh, uh any any what of satellites i mean how do we how do we get I, mean, I, I know, I know you. I know you have a lot of questions. What, one at a time, one at a time. And that is, we're, and when you're saying all the other space programs, JAXA and the European Union uh, and Israel and India and all those guys, the only guys that need to know are the telemetry guys. The rest of them, all the wrench turners, the people that build the fuel systems, the people that do everything else, they don't have to know. It, there's no better uh, need to know example than this one. Everybody else, it, they can be left in the dark. That's fine. And you think they, they all believe in it. They've all been working on it. They all still are fooled by it. And we just dump money and pay them so we can shoot a rocket into the ocean. Sure. Why not? I mean, keeping this thing a but secret. why would we do that? What, to, to what <laughs> because, because we built an institute of science for the last 500 years. So you go back all the way to Copernicus. Are you really going to go to the people of the world and say, oh, yeah, by the way, we were wrong about really something really, really big? Because the foundations of science get shaken at that point. Then there's a lot more questions. I don't think so. Oh, oh so. come on, I think, I think, come on, people. We, listen, we we can't cure cancer. We can't cure. We we, we can't fix their spines when we sever them. We we don't go. Oh, you know. Uh, uh, so, there's plenty of things that so, we don't know that we, we admit we don't know. Scientism don't, it is uh, as. Po so, say you're cracking up there for a second. Scientism. Yeah, we it, don't know if there's another planet that can host us, and we're very clear about that. We'd like to believe there is. We think there may be somewhere out there, so why not just lie and say we know of another one? I mean, you see what I'm saying? We have plenty of things that we admit that we don't know. Of course, but there's also things that we make claims that we know and we don't. Like the core of the Earth, for example. 4,000 miles straight down, if you believe this. And, you know, so, you know, we've all seen the pictures of red and orange and yellow and white bands. You know where the deepest hole ever drilled is? It's eight miles. So why why are we showing cross sections of the Earth when we have no freaking idea? And then we say, oh yeah, by the way, here's the cross sections of Jupiter and Saturn and Pluto. Science has has jumped off the rails and gone into scientism. So, is there, are there any other planets around? Who said there were planets? The people that told you we went to the moon? Those guys? The only people well, that have ever been to space? There's less than 500 people that even have claimed to gone up there, and they're all military, all of them. 
especially the United States. I, everyone keeps keep saying that NASA is this, you know, they wear white and they don't carry guns and they smile for the camera. It's like, look, NASA is DOD. They've always been. They are funded by the Air Force. <laughs> It's like, oh, by the way, just, you know, I'm completely okay with this. Oh, uh, no, no, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. I, I like it. Uh, I, okay, tell me. All right, let's work through a couple things. Right. Just because uh, if you're just joining the show, this is Mark Sargent. He is the keynote speaker at the Flat Earth International Conference happening the 15th and 16th in Denver. Tickets are available. You guys are not that far away. It's a day drive or a quick flight. Uh, if this is your, if this is where your world is at. But, I mean, let's talk about the uh, fact that you can see the shape of our Earth during a lunar during a, an eclipse. The lunar eclipse, you can see the shadow because the sun's on one side, we're in the middle, and then you can see it against the moon. So the, 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 the blood moon, actually. It's, and that can't, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to be aggressive here. That can't be faked. What I'm saying is if you go, into, go anybody, I know this dates me a little bit. If you go into a planetarium, and there might be one out in your neck of the woods, and you look up at the sure. sky, does Jupiter look spherical? Does the moon look spherical? Can you create a blood moon in a planetarium? Absolutely. And people say, well, yeah, but you're just in some sort of structure. You're in a building. I'm going, yeah, who is to say... Oh, so it's all like a movie. That's what you're okay. That's okay. Yeah. okay tell me this. Yeah. Why is it that? Uh, okay, let's talk about sundials. Yeah. If you, if you, if you, they wouldn't work. They'd be the same time everywhere on the earth. No, oh, no. And I know it's hard to break out of this. And that is what we're also saying is that if this thing is this giant building, the sun and the moon are much, much smaller and much, much closer. They're inside the building with but, you, but like a planetarium. Our shadows grow. Oh, so you're saying the sun is inside this building? Sure. It's and it's tiny by comparison. It's not four hundred thousand miles wide. It's very very small by comparison. And the sun and the moon are about the same size, which is why the eclipse fits so well. Everybody thinks it's a coincidence that the moon is four hundred times more narrow and four hundred times you know closer than the sun. No, they're just see, part. This is all kind of interesting. Yeah. So this is how you this. But if, okay, let me just play devil's advocate for a minute. Mm -hmm. If I were going to refute all that we know about the natural world, right. then you have to change the natural world itself completely, which means. Anytime somebody comes up with an argument that says no, because of uh, the world and science, we understand that you know uh, we have different varying climates because of our distance from the sun, the, the fact that we're around and we're right. you know moving in, in, in orbit. So to get rid of that, you have to theory, rebuild. Yeah, you have to rebuild the entire model you from have, scratch. You would have to come up with a model that takes it all out of the system. Yeah. Yeah, 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 which is one of the reasons why you keep this thing a secret. Academia would be turned on its ear. Uh, everything would have to be rebuilt from the ground up. I mean, astrophysics and... No, a, and global warming is total crap, is what you're saying. Oh, no, no, no. That's the best part. Global. Well, I'm glad that, by the way, you call it global warming instead of climate change. How, 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 could, it, how could it be changing if, if, if there's a big building we're living in run by somebody else, right. and now they're mad at us, that they're just going to slowly kill us like ants under a magnifying no, glass? No, no, part, most of it's an automated system. So, like, for example, if you're in a sports stadium, and I can't remember if uh, the stadium out there is enclosed where you guys are, but if you've ever been in a closed know, stadium, let's say you're one of those stadiums and everybody starts smoking at the same time. How long before the air in that place comes breathable? And that's just a sports stadium. If we're talking about something much, much bigger, in fact, climate change right. slash global warming works a lot better in an enclosed <laughs> building. It, 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 right, it, are you telling me, though, I'm sorry to interrupt, but are you telling me that the person, you're saying the entity that could create a giant flat flying terrarium right. couldn't get, uh, couldn't filter out Toxin. Oh, oh! I'm sure the toxins could be filtered out, but it's much more interesting to see what we're de what we're going to do to each other down here. You know, all part of the natural process. And who's to say that the automated system there's like nothing a, like, natural about it? Well, nothing, that's the that's you're putting it. There's nothing natural about it. You're absolutely there's right. No I, that's a that's a great great way to put it. You're right. There is no natural way. But the system itself doesn't have to be lightning fast to respond. And let's face it, the weather has been changing to the point where look, I I was getting a tan yesterday up in Seattle in November. How is that happening? So whatever's happening to yeah, us here well, is real. Which, okay, so who who is controlling this? Uh, really, you're going to jump to that already? You're going to hit people with the the, sure, the, the God concept? So much time. I, listen, I, I gotta, I uh, no, no, that's who I'm supposed to be. No, that's who's fine. Who's ass do I kiss? That's what I'm asking. It, it can only, it can only, ass have I got to kiss? It, it can only be one of two things. Either it's an advanced civilization uh, or it is some sort of divine power. And I'm not going to pick on one. There's five major religions here. Uh, couldn't a divine power just make a globe? Why would you? I, it, it, well, why, why, I'm, and I'm not saying because because if the because of 99.9% .9 of the people believe in the illusion, that's what you go with. And I'm not saying God is lazy. I'm saying that God is very, very efficient. 
So if God you, wants you, to... You believe yeah. if there was a God yes. that is omnipotent, and he created the earth, yes. and then he saw, he believed, or he created a flat earth, but he saw a bunch of people lying down there, he wouldn't be like, no, I'm not having it. No, you, you know, you'd be refuting his very creation. It's it's all part of the. Pro- oh, you mean? Oh, you mean like the people aren't buying that it's uh, that it's. He'd be pissed. Yeah. If, well, if, that if, I, if, I think if that's. You were, if everybody was purporting that it was round when it was really flat, and he made the whole thing. It's like, look, you sons of a bitch. Let's I, just say there's a big angry god I, flying on a cloud with them, judging I, us for our. I misdeeds. am. I am so glad you asked that question. Nobody in the history of all the interviews I've done has asked me that question, and that is, yeah, you're right, absolutely. Which is, I think it's part of the process. I think everybody here is supposed to find it out, and I don't want to quote chapter and verse here too much but that's what happened with the whole tower of babel thing tower of babel it's like okay we figured out where this place is let's start building a tower straight to the to the roof and then god said nah, let's not do that and then he just started to mix things up so i think the but divine if we were flat they probably i'm sorry what if we were flat really couldn't they just build a tower all the way up well that's the whole point the tower of babel doesn't even make sense unless it's flat in fact, most of the biblical stuff, the Bible is a flat earth book for for the most part, except for exception of one verse. It's a flat earth book. And I know you don't want to necessarily look. get. I'm sorry. Say it again. Well, it's all it's all very interesting. I like yeah. it. I yeah. like it. I hope it's true. Well, by the way, why doesn't the uh, uh, water fall off? <laughs> because we're in a building. Why isn't water fall off in a lake? We're in a giant. What, what do you think the edges are made of? I mean, what do you what do you think that word was protecting us? Wow. Yeah, I thought it was. You have wonderful questions. You've been thinking about this. Uh, take take your pick when it comes to what the the edge structure is made out of. A uh, high frequency unified field, a uh, force field, heavy element, heavy water. I don't know. Whatever it is, it can't be broken. The United States and Soviet Union tried to punch through it from the 1950s to the early 1960s with their atomic uh, high altitude program and never could do it. So they just gave up. And it's like, okay, we'll militarize and space. What is around us? And if, if what's outside? What's if, outside of us? If, if, what's outside of us? I, I take you got a couple choices. One could be more of these because I don't think it's a one-off by any stretch, and the other would be an unlimited universe. And if you want to call it heaven, that's fine. But this world is made out of ninety-nine percent conflict, so I think whatever's outside of here is probably the opposite. Well, yeah, exactly. I would hope. <laughs> I would hope it'd be better in this place. I you believe the interference is it'd be a pretty cruel god in so many ways well unless you're here to learn unless it's perspective you know i I believe everything i think this place is more of a school than anything else some people call it a prison some people call it entertainment but i think it's a little bit of both i I think we're here to learn and then eventually we graduate drill through to the bottom and fall out no because we can't we can't drill through anything the deepest hole ever tried by the the germans and the russians was eight miles we cannot go past eight miles down How how deep are we do you think after eight miles, I don't know. If you want to, if you want to make this place, I don't think you'd need it any more than a couple hundred miles, though. At most. Are we square or round? By the way. Oh wow! Oh my! You have got the best questions. <laughs> this is awesome. I am so glad you're asking these. Uh, at the edges, it really has to be square. The inside, the inside lake can be round, of course, but the outside has to be be square because all engineering things are done in squares. Machines do not like thinking in circles. They only like thinking really in right angles. So and and computer simulations, which is a whole other thing. That's a crazy reasoning, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, circles and, and wheels and, and it. it well, I mean, it's it, it is well, like you said, it's it's forward. it's not natural. It's it's uh, it's mechanical. And if it's a machine, m- most machines, any engineer will tell you, uh, you know, it'd be way more efficient. Which is why all Hollywood backlots are these giant square buildings. You can build anything you want inside them. But you have to start with a square. Uh, the holodeck from Star Trek Next Gen was a giant square room. Uh, computer software. Anyone that's in software knows that, it, that you got to start with a, squ- a box. And then inside the box, you can make anything you want. But you got to start with a box. You uh, Okay, so how high, how high is up, I guess? How high before way? you run into things? Uh, not that yeah. high. Not that high. So, well, I mean, airplanes, yeah. airplanes cap out at about uh, 10 miles. Spy, sure. sp- spy planes, about 20 miles. This thing, I would be, it'd be a stretch to go any further than maybe a couple thousand miles. And that, that's, that's more than we need. 
and and the Earth is like a giant. The Sun is a giant heat lamp. Why do we have different climates? Are they moving it like back it's, and it's, forth it's, on people? It's, yeah, it's moving. It's like a and turning I, the heat up and down. Yeah, it, it's probably changing in elevation. It's moving around like a record on a record player. So it, you know where it goes. In. Why wouldn't they just make it one temperature for everybody? Uh, how interesting is that? You know, gotta make gotta have a, <laughs> variety is the spice I never of life. About it with my fish tank, I just make the fish tank the same temperature all the way. Oh down. yeah, yeah, yeah. But what if you had a really, really, really big fish tank? They then you could do all sorts of fun things, but the fish tank's a little different because water, the the way it transfers heat, you you don't. This this is this works out much much better. And again, having different climates produces different results. We're basically, a fish tank. The Earth is basically a fish tank. I, There's more water than there is Earth. And more many pieces of land. More th that is true, but it's more of a it's more like a fish tank with islands on the top of it. Uh, you're right. Yeah, there's more water than more land, but you know, little. It's it's kind of like a big saltwater lake with you know little pockets of land on, on the top of it but it works out very well what kind of a dick stand? i'm just let's just go ahead and go with your theory for a minute what <laughs> kind of a dick stands at the outside of it and then cranks a tornado off and brig and bri just rips people's lives apart and kills babies with that for fun well look there's lots of a lot, talk, talk, talking about talk, rip through panama city talking about god's motives is is one thing and i don't want to speculate on exactly what what those are but i, the, I mean but, if that were true no, what a but, dick. but at the same time what if we volunteered to come in this place you know buyer beware get on the get on the roller coaster I, I didn't pull out <laughs> I know how I got here. My old man made a mistake and didn't wear a condom. <laughs> nice. I'm just saying that I don't think I don't. First off, I don't think we're the the last people to rent this apartment. I think civilizations come and go here. We all have our time. Okay. And uh, I get that. so, as far as I'll God's motivations, I think it's I think it's a little little bigger than what I can hey, come up with. Go ahead. Before we go too far, uh, what about dinosaurs? Oh, I and I know there's some people that don't believe that dinosaurs exist. No, I think the dinosaurs were part of some sort of previous version of this place, the early versions of this place, where everything was huge, and then they, and then we just made it smaller and smaller. Like the Japanese started creating smaller and smaller transistors, you know, like we used to use vacuum tubes, and now we use tiny microprocessors. Uh, what about uh, Sasquatch? Stuff like that. Do you think aliens abduct people? Are there aliens? Do we have UFOs? Uh, there are UFOs. I've absolutely seen them. You can go out and watch. It's not even a secret. You can go out with night vision anytime you want. You can come and, in and, and, but, and but take the, things in our asses and well, then bail out again. Well, that's the question, which is, again, you have, uh, I, you've, if you've written these down, these are really wonderful. Uh, and that is, are aliens, and I don't even call them really aliens anymore, are the ships part of older civilizations that were in here with us, that are trapped in here with us? Or are they, can they leave? Can they go from this, you know, this realm to another one? I'd like to think they're actually trapped in here with us and they're just part of older civilizations. And we all know that. It's like, we're, we are not the first ones here. You know, the sunken cities off of Japan, sunken cities off of India, the Bosnian pyramids, the regular pyramids, so on and so on. Again, every civilization has a certain amount of time. And I think there are remnants that hang on. Of course, of course. We, and we all believe that. Those civilizations, they get grow and fall. It's just, it's the nature of history. It's nature sure, but, of I, but I think there were high-tech civilizations that survived. You know, we, it doesn't, I, I think silver is, technology is lost eventually. Not like the Apollo program where they say, oh, you know, we, we, we don't know how to go back to the moon anymore. And I'm, none of those things we saw before were very technologically advanced. The city under the, you know, off the coast of Vietnam, it, it was block cities like Atlantis. You go to Peru and you see the, yeah. the Inca blocks, which I've been to, and, uh, and they're interesting, and it's very good workmanship, but there's nothing all that technically advanced. Other well, than the it may, but maybe the tech is deteriorates over time. And remember, if you know if you leave one of our planes out long enough, they will crumble and turn into nothing. So, who's to say? I, I believe in old technology, though. I do. I, 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 if you go and look at the pyramids and you look at Cairo next to it, it's like, yeah, these people had nothing to do with this. The pyramids are are are, are an engineering marvel, and I do not think that we had anything to do with it. Sure, they are. Of course they are, but they're not new tech. They're an engineering marvel, no doubt about it. Same way uh, as Machu Picchu, but not high tech. Ah, so you, yeah, you know some of this stuff. I, I, be I believe, like, if you've watched any of the ancient alien stuff, and believe it if you guys want or not, but I think I've that... I've seen the NASA lines in Peru. I've, I've walked the Inca Trail. Perfect. I've seen Machu Picchu. I've seen this, the reshaping heads of the children uh, in the museum where the, you know, we thought that that's why we mistook grays for that. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think I don't think all of it, of course, is is right. You know, we we speculate on a lot of stuff, but I do think some of it. I mean, I I think some of the greatest stories, greatest legends and myths, are have some truth in them. Do you believe in the Indian myth? Then do you believe the myth of 
of uh, uh, Devil's Tower, that there was a brave standing on top. And the reason that there are claw marks on the side, it's not geology. It's because a bear, a speared bear, chased him up there and clawed it, trying to get at it. You know, it's funny. That's, that's actually a good one. I like that one. I, but I, I don't believe in it. But then again, I don't believe in uh, that Elvis is still alive. Uh, but but no, that, that the Devil's Tower is an interesting one because if you ever want to look up an interesting story, and again, one of the things when you get into Flat Earth is that you're open-minded to a lot of stuff, is sure. that Devil's Tower and a lot of rock formations were actually petrified versions of old trees that uh that we you know the big we know there's petrified trees yeah we but i mean like like petrified wood and and basalt yeah but i but i mean like when like like dinosaurs right like di if you believe that dinosaurs were just big versions of lizards that were uh that were designed here a long long time ago that maybe there were even bigger versions of trees and bigger versions of this and that and that you know that again remnants left all over the place so i no, no, we see that stuff sure so. We see big stuff. I mean, not as big as that, but I mean, we know the difference geologically between a petrified tree and and basalt formations making the the, the bridge of the uh, the Giants Bridge, uh, you know, connecting Ireland and Scotland. Sure, I, well, there's that as well, which is. <laughs> Again, it's it's interesting though because it's, where does science end and when does it become scientism? Science makes leaps of faith, and people buy it because they're wearing the white lab coats. So, I, what I'm saying, Neil deGrasse Tyson had this wonderful quote where he said that science is true whether or not you believe in it. And I said, you, uh, it's probably the most arrogant thing I've ever heard in my life because yeah, if you want to tell me the boiling temperature of water at sea level, that's fine. You can tell me that. These are things we can test. But if you want to tell me about the core of the Earth, no. You want to tell me about dark matter. No, I don't think so. Evolution, boy, I don't know, carbon dating. There's a lot of things where science just puts their stamp on and say, no, no, it's repeatable. Uh, perfect, perfect. You, don't, you don't believe in evolution. I believe in evolution, but I think it was artificial, which is weird. Uh, it kind of should be a contradictory in terms, which is artificial evolution. I'm saying that every once in a while, when this, you know, when civilizations are changed out in this world, like that that. that things intervene and manipulate us but i don't think it's this natural you're process artificial evolution so you're saying like the higher being just looked at the you went know, not you penguin right i'm sorry I'm, but i like it well i would like I, to eat about a half ounce of mushrooms and sit at your conference <laughs> you should you should come i mean there's a lot of people look let me let me mention there's going to be some I, I don't even know yet they haven't told me they won't tell me until next week that there's some monster a-lister that's going to come out at this thing and turn it into to a, a, a tv show yeah it's it's really huge look, i've I, I i've met to a-listers peru. i'm sorry go ahead i went to equitos peru with the intent and purpose and, and followed through to find a shaman and and and, and do ayahuasca just because I'm look I'm I'm always looking to see what the world's all about. You you should you so should you should, why, you why should go. I don't I don't know if I'd uh, recommend doing ayahuasca at uh, at the conference, but you should go. No no no. no I, I go. <laughs> mushrooms i think a little mushroom would make it incredibly fun <laughs> they, there are some people that do drugs there and it's going to be in colorado so you know it's it's totally yeah. legal you can do whatever you want there i think but but i encourage it well, anyone I'll that wants to come out i i'd love i'd love to meet them there's going to be a lot of people there it'll be fun i think it'll be a super fun thing to go to man i i it wasn't it's happening the flat earth international conference 2018 yeah. this year november yep. 15th and 16th in denver colorado get information at se 2018.com. Yep. Uh, Mark's one of the speakers there. It should, uh, are there. Is there anything uh, besides speaking? Are there interesting vendors? Are there, are there, are there stuff to do? Stuff oh, to buy? yeah, yeah, yeah. There, we're, we're going out and doing a big billboard event. Uh, there's a big karaoke thing on Saturday, I think. Uh, and, of course, there's lots of things, lots of vendors in the hallways doing all sorts of it. Mad Mike's going to be there. Uh, he's coming in and, and towing, he's towing his oh. rocket from California. So. It's fantastic. Yeah. Man. Uh, well, listen, I hope you guys have a great time. Thanks. And, uh, trust me, in this world of actual problems and people with a different, a diverse views, this is not one of them. I'm completely okay if we're flat. I'm completely okay if we're round. Either way. Nice. And uh, I'm glad that you're challenging people's thinking no matter what the outcome is. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you have a good time, and you're always welcome here. All right. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Big Batman. Bye-bye.
Mark, you were fantastic, dude. That was fantastic. Uh, I, from time to time, when this debate comes up, I'll call you because he's like, like he's literally looking at me through the window, like with the okay. So he's like, I, he just loves a dude who will come on and intelligently debate it, and no bullshit and whatever. He's like, oh yeah, that's fantastic. So oh no, hap- I will, uh, I'll let. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, I was happy to do it, and I was more, more impressed because he had some of the best questions I've heard in months, so that was awesome. That was awesome. I will, I'll let you go, brother, and I'll let you get a little sleep, but okay. I will, we'll holler at you. Thank you for coming on. All right, thank you very much. See you, buddy. Bye-bye.